Well, good afternoon. How are we doing today? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Derek Thompson. I am uh, the Archadults pastor here at the church. And what that means is, is I head up the department that oversees our groups and classes and our biblical counseling here at the church. And can I say it is an honor and privilege to be a part of this great body of believers and to serve you all. And it is an honor and privilege to be here supporting Pastor Allen and Miss Joy. How many of you guys know we're blessed to have senior pastors like Pastor Allen and Miss Joy? Great leadership, and it's only taken me 30 years to figure out the importance of leadership. You know, as I was preparing for uh, this lesson this, this morning or this afternoon, um, it, it reminded me of a time in my life where I didn't value leadership as I do today. Um, I was 16, year old, 16 year, years old, 16-year-old uh, wisdom, but uh, 16 years old, playing basketball, and I never forget, it was, it was uh, the most memorable game of my life. We had a very good team. We were actually 29-1 and one and uh, really, you know, making an impact in our area. But this particular game stands out simply because um, of the events that transpired. We were, we were in the locker room before the game, and we were kind of goofing off and playing around, and I'll never forget it. So myself and another guy, we were the captains of the team, and we were goofing off, playing around, and our coach comes in. And coach says, all right, guys, we got to get our head in the game. We can't take our opponent for granted. And I remember turning around saying, coach, we got this. You see, we, we, we were playing a team that we had beat, beaten handedly several times before. And for whatever reason, in my 16-year-old wisdom, I thought, we don't need to get serious about this. You know, it, it's in the bag. And the coach said, no, Derek, seriously, guys, we, we, we got to get our head in the game and get ready, you know, to, to go out there and, and, and to do this. And I remember saying, coach, we got this. And he looked at me and he says, Derek, you act like you don't need me. And I remember myself responding, coach, we're the ones who do all the work. We're the ones out on the court. <laughs> yeah. And so he says, really? Okay. And he turns around and he walks out of the locker room. And I remember in my 16-year-old wisdom turning around to the guy saying, we don't need him. We got this. We're good. And so, you know, I told the guys, here's what we're going to do. And so we all got on the same page. We went out. Uh, to the court to start warming up. And as we're warming up, I happen to look over to the left and I see Coach sitting on the top row in the stands as a spectator. And I remember saying, ah, we don't need him, we're good. So the game starts. And, and as soon as the game starts, we get going. And guys, this team that we had beaten several times in the past, very handedly, at the end of the second quarter, going into halftime, we found ourselves down by 30 points. And can I tell you, we were upset. We were angry. We were frustrated. We go into the locker room. We're bickering. We're arguing. You know, I'm screaming. And then we hear a knock on the door. And we turn around, and it's our coach, our leader. And he says, are you ready to win? And I remember saying, what? And he says, Derek, are you ready to win? I said, yeah. He said, guys, are you ready to win? And, and I remember saying, coach, we're down 30 points. He says, listen to me. He goes, if you're ready to win, if you'll simply listen to me, and do exactly what I tell you to do, he said, I will lead you to victory. And guys, can I tell you, when we went back out on that court, we took that 30-point deficit, and we ended up winning by 25 points. Why? Because we made a decision to listen to our leader and allow him to lead us to victory. Guys, this morning, I believe God sent me here to tell you that if we will simply begin to listen to him and do exactly what he's told us to do, he will lead us to victory. That he's ready to, he, we're in a season now where he wants to take us from where we are and put us in a better place in our marriages. He wants to take us from where we are right now and put, a, put us in a better place financially. He wants to take us where we are today and to put us a be, in a better place in our body and, and, and remove sickness and disease from our bodies. And, and finally, he, he wants to take us where we are today. And, and those children who are acting like aliens in your household, he, he wants to help you to get in a better place so that you can see them honoring the Lord with every aspect of their lives. Does that make sense, guys? God wants to see us in victory in every area of our lives. And how that happens is by us inviting him in and making, a pri making him a priority in our lives. The scripture tells us in Proverbs 21, it says, The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. True victory is found with the Lord. If we're going to see our situation turn around, and we've got to invite him in. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and, and lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. He'll direct your path. 
And what we found, well, what I found is, is sometimes we trust in the Lord when it comes to our salvation. But with everything else in our life, we're like, I'm, I'm good, I got this, Lord. But it says, with all of your heart. So we've got to make place for the Lord in every area of our lives. We've got to trust in him when it comes to our marriages. We've got to trust in him when it comes, in, 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 when it comes to our parenting. We've got to trust in him when it comes to our, our finances and our, and our jobs and in, in, our, in our health. We've got to trust in him in, in all areas of our life. And if we'll do that, he'll lead us to victory in every area of our life. You see, that's what I love about the Lord, though. He tells us, in this world, there will be trouble. But be of good cheer, because I've overcome the world. In another scripture, he says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I, the Lord, have delivered you from them all. You see, he never, ever once left us in the dark. He told us we would have challenges and trouble in this world. But what he's saying is, is with me, I'll help you overcome them. With me, you'll experience victory. But we've got to bring him in. This morning, I believe two things that I, I, we, we need to do in our lives. We need to make God a piece of our life or the, the foundation of our life, and then we need to begin to go to him and, and live with him in, in, by faith and in faith. Come close to him and, and do it by faith. 1 John 5, 4 and 5 says, For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, when we talk about faith, I've had people ask me, what do you mean by faith? Faith is not, when I say faith, I'm not talking about a belief system. I'm talking about faith being a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. Confidence and assurance. Confidence and assurance. When we talk about confidence, we're saying we are confident in God and we are confident in his word. When we talk about assurance, we're talking about we are assured of that final outcome, that God has something better for me, that my best days are ahead of me, that you know what, this deal that I'm dealing with right now, it's temporary, it has an expiration date. God has something in store for me in the days ahead. And, and that, that's what we mean when we say going to him in faith, living life in faith, meaning you're not, you're not living life according to what you see, you're living life according to God and his word. And when you can do that, now you're operating from a position of an advantage. Now you're on your way to victory. It reminds me of a story, one of my favorite stories in scripture, and it, it's, it's found in, in the book of Mark. It's, it's about this woman. It, it refers to her as the woman with the issue of blood. And it says that this woman, bled. She had this condition in her body for 12 years, and she was just bleeding. And, she, and they couldn't figure out what was going on. It says she went from doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor, and no one could help her. It goes on to state that she took all of her money, spent all of her money trying to find this cure, and, and no one could help her. In fact, it said after 12 years, she found herself in a worse position than she originally was in. But my favorite part of this passage, it says, but when she heard about Jesus. She said within herself, if I can get to him, I will be made whole. I'll be healed. Guys, some of us, we've got to change our inner dialogue. We, we, we've, got, we've got to understand that if, if, if we're going through something, if we will simply within ourselves realize that Jesus is the answer and begin to say, you know what? My marriage is jacked up right now. But if I can get to Jesus, if I can get close to him, He'll turn this around. You hear what I'm saying this morning? We need to be able to say, you know what? There's too much red on the ledger in my finances. But if I can get to Jesus, if I can get up close to him, he'll bring an abundance of provision into my life. Does that make sense, guys? We need to get to a point where we say, you know what? There's sickness in my body. But if I can get to Jesus, his healing and his cure will come in and remove this from every trace of my body. That's the inner dialogue that we have to have. And this story, that my favorite part of this story, it goes on to say that so after she made this, this declaration on the inside of her, that she pressed through the crowd and she, she, she went all the way up to the front and got so close to Jesus that she touched the hem of his garment. And as soon as she touched the hem of his garment, it, the Bible says that healing came into her. Power left Jesus and healing came into her. And then Jesus stops 
And he says, who touched me? And the woman stepped forward and she said, it was I, Lord. And it says, Jesus said, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and struggle no more. Guys, this morning I believe God wants you to know that your faith has the potential to turn your situation around. Your faith, if it drives you to God, it will turn your every situation around. God wants you to come to him. You know, this, this today, we, 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 everybody is, is in a different mood because it's, it's spring forward, right? You got those people who, who woke up early and they're grumpy and frustrated because it's spring forward. You got those of you who are here a little bit late and you're like, man, this just doesn't feel right. It's spring forward, man, ah, it, ah this, I hate this. But guys, we've got to reframe every aspect of our life. You know, I got up this morning, and hey, I'm not preaching at you. I'm, I'm preaching at myself this morning because this morning, I'm the one who got up and was like, oh, man, I got to teach this morning. Just spring forward. I lost an hour, you know. But then I got up, and the Lord really quickened me, and so I got out, and so uh, I, I was walking outside, and I saw all that pollen all over the cars. And I said, Lord, thank you for all that pollen all over the cars. <laughs> Lord, I, I thank you that that pollen, Lord, that you're going to use that to go and, you know, uh, start new growth in the ground, new growth on the plants. Thank you for that, Lord. And as I'm saying that, you know, kind of being sarcastic, the Lord says, if you will allow me, I'll do something new on the inside of you. And guys, I, I want you to understand that if we will allow God to get up close to us, he will do something new in your situation. There is no place too dark and no situation too far gone that the Lord can't pull you back from. That he is the God of more than enough. He can do some great and mighty things in your life if you will allow him to do that. You know, it reminds me of a story, a personal story. You know, when, when, when my wife and I, um, before we came to Houston, we were in San Antonio, and we hit some dark times. We hit some troubled times. And we lost finances, we lost a home, we lost friends, and we lost family. We lost everything. And for six months, I murmured and complained for six months. Now, is there anybody in here who believes that God moves on murmuring and complaining? No. One day, I woke up, and I began to pull the Lord in. I began to go to him in faith. And as I read his word, as I went to church on Sundays, as I went to church on Wednesdays, and as I read his word at home, and as I went to church again on Sunday, and I went to church on Wednesday, something began to happen on the inside of me. Now all of a sudden, there's this strength that was rising up on the inside of me. And as this strength began to rise up on the inside of me, things began to turn around. You know, it reminded me of, you know, for, for those of us who were children of the 70s and 80s, and we had some different toys back then. We didn't have a lot of the video games and technology. And there was one toy that sticks out to me. And so if, if, if you're a lot younger, just kind of bear with me a little bit. But there was this toy. It was called a bop bag or, or weeble wobble or whatever you want to call it. And basically, this thing, it was a big bag, and it was weighted on the bottom. And every time you would hit it, it would pop back up. And it didn't matter how many times you hit it, right hand, left hand, it popped back up. Now, I was a bad little child. I'll be the first one to admit it. My, my, mother, would con my mother would say amen on that one. But I'm the child who not only would I hit it, but I would kick it, and it would fly across the room and hit the wall and then hit the ground, and then it would go down, but it would pop back up. So then I was determined, so I'd go get a baseball bat, and I'd swing the baseball bat, and it would hit it, and it would fly across the, the, the room and hit the wall and hit the ground, and it would go down, and it would pop back up. No matter what I did, every time that thing went down, it came back up. Guys, when you put God in your life, when he's the foundation of your life, it doesn't matter what the world brings to you. It doesn't matter how dark it gets. You will always pop back up. Why? Because the Lord and, 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 and having a spirit of faith, it weighs us down. We become grounded and rooted in him. And if we'll do that, we will experience victory in every area of our life. So here we were, my wife and I, we lost everything. And, and then we started building ourselves up in faith. And then all of a sudden, doors of opportunity started happening. God began to give us clarity, give us direction, give us joy. He began to move in our marriage, move in our finances. He blessed me with a new job. He brought us to Houston. He put us in this church. You know, we were able to, to be connected with all of you. Our lives turned around. Why? Because we make God a priority in our life. And we experience victory in that season of life. God is a good God. And he loves us. 
He wants to do great, great things for us. In spite of what you may think, he's good, he's faithful, and he's true. We talk about faith being confidence and assurance. Uh, we've got to believe in God and believe in his word. You know, every class that I teach, I typically have the people do a, a declaration, and I take this Bible, and I lead them in, it to, in, a, in, a, in a confession, and it says, this is my Bible. It's God's word to me. It strengthens me, it refreshes me, and it's medicine to me, and I love to read my Bible. Pastor Allen wrote that out for us in healing class several years ago, and it's important for us to, 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 to get that on the inside of us because we need to know that when life happens, we can go to the Word of God and find our answers. It doesn't matter what it is that we're dealing with, God will supply the answer. He'll make the crooked places straight, he'll, he'll bring clarity into your situation, but he will give you what you need and lead you into victory. Does this make sense, guys? So we talked about the woman with the issue of blood. Here's one of the things that, that, that God has shown me here lately. Each week, the last few weeks, we've been singing this new song, See a Victory. My favorite verse in the song is the very first verse. It says, the weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. You see, we've got to have that on the inside of us, weighing us down, that when we get the diagnosis, and they say, you know what, there's nothing else we can do. And, and, and that's when you're like, no, 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 no. The weapon may be formed, but it's not going to prosper. This darkness in my life, it might fall, but it won't prevail. And the doctor may say, what are you talking about? Well, because the God I serve, he only knows how to prosper. And you know what else? My God will never fail. My challenge to you is, is when you sing that song from this point on, have a whole different attitude about it. I want you to approach that song with a zeal and a passion knowing that whatever it is you're dealing with right now in that moment, you know what, it's temporary. Because God does not fail. He only knows how to prosper. And he will bless you no matter what. And here's the thing I love about God. You know, I talked about denying him for six months. God's not sitting there saying, you know what, Derek, you're six months too late. Got nothing for you, can't help you. Whenever you need him, he's right there. That's how much he loves us. And he will never leave us or forsake us, ever. There's a story in uh, 1 Samuel. It's about David and his men. Let's read that together. It says, when David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and his daughters, but David found strength in the Lord his God. And David inquired of the Lord, and he asked, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? And the Lord answered him. He said, you will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. It goes on to say, David fought from dusk until evening of the next day, and none of them got away, except for 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything and the, Amalek the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything. David brought everything back. This morning, I want you to know no matter where you're at, no matter what you've gone through, no matter how long you've been dealing with it, if you inquire of the Lord, he will direct you in such a way that you will recover all. No, guys, y'all didn't hear me this morning. If the enemy has ever stolen anything from you, your peace, a relationship, finances, a business, your children, your health. If you will inquire of the Lord, you will recover all. You've got to understand God wants you to win. God wants to see you in victory. You know, I, I, I'll be the first one to admit, I, I don't like losing, okay, in anything. I, I'm not that dad, all right? I got three kids. My kids will tell you. From the time they were little till now, it ain't about making them feel good about themselves. It's not about them <laughs> getting confidence. No. If we're playing a board game, if, if we're playing a video game, whatever it is, I'm going to win. That's how I, I, that's how I play. <laughs> Why? Because victory feels good. Defeat feels bad. <laughs> and as a child of God, God wants you to win. He wants you to experience victory in every area of your life. In fact, he wants you to know this. The Bible says that when Jesus rose from the grave, that he defeated death, hell, and the grave for you. It said it showed, he, he made an open show of them 
to, to, to the heavens and, and to everyone so that everyone would know that not only did he defeat it, but now that you're on the winning side. Oh, come on, say, say it with me. Say, I'm on the winning side. Say it again. Say, I'm on the winning side. Yes, you are. Let, let, let me sh share this with you here in 2 Corinthians 2, 14. It says, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. I want you to do something with me this morning. Put your hand on your chest and say, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Oh, y'all can get louder than that. Say, thanks be to God. Who always, who always leads me, leads me to, triumph. to triumph. Now let's say it again. Say, thanks be to God, be to God. who always, who always leads, me leads me to triumph. To triumph. Now I want you to think about whatever it is you're dealing with. All right? Now let's say it again. Say, thanks be to God, be to God. who always, who always leads, me leads me to triumph. To triumph. You see, here's a good thing about God. God didn't say you would experience victory 30% of the time. He didn't say you would experience victory 50% of the time. In fact, he didn't say you would experience victory 99% of the time. He said, my children, you will experience victory 100% of the time. Always, you will always triumph. No matter what it looks like, you will always triumph. And you've got to know you're not alone. He's right here with you. He's right here with you. Look what the scripture says right here. It says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye upon you. That's a loving God, a loving Father, who's not going to just throw you out there. He's going to say, okay, you pulled me in. Now let's go get it. Let's go do this. Let's go experience victory together. You know, I talked about how my family and I ended up here in Houston on our journey and how I murmured and complained for six months in San Antonio, light bulb moment, re realized I needed to invite God in and everything turned around. Came to Houston and was like, God brought us here. This is the promised land. Glory to God. But how many of you know that once you experience victory, it doesn't mean you'll never experience trouble again. And the same principles you use here you need to use here. It's a continual thing. We got here in Houston. I got this new job, a new promotion, and I meet this guy that I'm going to be working for. And my first meeting with him was, I walked in, I'm Derek Thompson. And his words were, I don't really care who you are, I don't like you. And I'm thinking, you don't know me. What do you mean you don't like me? Give me a chance. And he said, I'm here for one reason and one reason alone. I want to be promoted. And if you get in my way, he said, I will crush you. I'll step on you. I, he goes, your job is to help me get promoted. And that was our initial meeting. And from there on, it got worse. He would throw racial slurs my way. He would cuss me out in meetings. It was, it was a horrible situation. And you would think, Derek, who's coming to the ark, hearing the word of God taught, would know that when he was in San Antonio, things turned around when he invited God in. And so he would learn from that and apply it to this situation. You know? <laughs> what took six months in San Antonio took two years here in Houston. <laughs> I murmured and I complained, and I murmured and I complained, I murmured and I complained. And then finally, light bulb. And so I said, okay, God, I've been doing this all wrong. Come on in. And so then I was like, all right, Lord, let's do this. Let's figure out how we're going to take him out and crush him. <laughs> I mean, God, that's, that's not how God does things. <laughs> so then I had to relinquish control in that regard as well. And so then I went to God. And guys, sometimes you're going to go to God, and God's going to give you direction that you may not like. And I remember saying, all right, God, I'm open. How do I handle this situation? Give me wisdom. Give me guidance. Give me direction. And the Lord said, pray for him. And I remember out of my mouth, I said, no. I'm not praying for that man. No way. And for two weeks, I kept saying, no, I refuse. I'm not praying for that man. And everything got worse. And then finally, I said, all right. All right, Lord, you're with. All right, I'm sorry. And I began to pray for this guy. And I began to pray for him. And I began to pray for him. And I began to pray for him. And slowly but surely, things began to turn around. 
until one day, all the issues stopped. He got promoted out, and he was gone. Now, fast forward a couple of years later, I hear a knock on the door early in the morning, and it's this guy. He's back in town. He comes up, and he says, hey, um, just wanted to stop by and say thank you. Um, he said, I've known a lot of people who profess to be Christians. He said, and you're the first one who really showed me that you're a Christian. I said, oh, yeah? He goes, oh, yeah, you've always had my back. And uh, this guy, when he was there, was a strong alcoholic. He was running around with his wife. And so that particular morning, he says, I just want to let you know, I've stopped drinking, and um, my wife and I, we're in a good place now. He goes, and I don't know what you've been doing, but I know you had a part in it, so thank you. And he walks out. Yeah, your response is better than mine, because he walks out, and I remember telling God, no! <laughs> You're supposed to strike this dude down. What are you doing? <laughs> and, and you, know, I, you know, God was like, yeah. And, and so I got my heart back in line. But, but I, I, the whole point is, is, guys, sometimes you've got to realize that not only does God want to see you in victory, but he wants to use you to bring others into victory as well. Guys, we're living in a season where God wants you to move forward in victory. But it's your move. Will you invite him in? Will you go after him in faith? Will you allow him to do what he wants to do in your life? If you will, great and mighty things are in store in the days ahead. Will you bow your heads? Father, we come before you today, Lord God, with humble hearts, and we thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing in our lives, all that you're going to do, and we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you that the word has come forth today. It's fallen on good ground. And Lord, I thank you that something in this message is going to produce fruit in our lives, Lord God. It will begin to resonate with us. And Lord, from this day forward, Lord God, I thank you that we walk in victory. 